Rocks and blast beats for another week. This is the nerdiest podcast that ever there was. The coolest of the uncool. Uh, it just rolls off the tongue. That it really, really the does. Coolest of the most uncool. Yeah, the I most don't know. Uncool. I say it rolls off the tongue for you, but I definitely struggled. To the say coolest that. of the. <laughs> They're the coolest uncool podcast. The, the coolest, coolest uncool, uncool podcast that ever there was. <laughs> I am one of your nerds here to talk some nerdy stuff. My name is Josh Redbeard. I am one of your nerds. To maybe talk some nerdy stuff. I don't know. Margie. <laughs> I'm absolutely going to talk nerdy stuff. And I'm Grant. And so that's Basil. Gonna segue. Huh? Basil. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm Basil. Basil. <laughs> I'm Basil. Thanks, Basil. That's a footy joke that most people listen to this will not get. Um, Definitely not. Anyway, sports ball. <laughs> hell yeah. Nerdiest thing this week. Been playing a game called Woe Long and the Fallen Dynasty. So this oh, yeah. is the newest offering from a, a Japanese developer called Team Ninja, which do one of my favorite game series, Ninja Gaiden. But apparently this one is really, really, really hard. Like it's more of a Souls-like style, whereas Ninja Gaiden's a bit more kind of like still rolling, dodging, hard bosses, big like anime-ish storylines. But it's more combo fighting, like Street Fighter combos, whereas Ooh. this is more dodge parry. So I was kind of a bit disappointed that it wasn't more like their previous titles but you know you've got to evolve with the times and people don't want to learn combos anymore they just want to parry <laughs> i for one am one who does not like to parry that often and oh, 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 right. so i've joined the ranks of the uh the 66 percent of players on xbox that have played this game that have not beat the first boss so uh, I found an article the other day that only 33% of the people who've played this game on Xbox have beat the tutorial because the tutorial that... boss is quite difficult, but you do, if you, it, it's basically saying you need to learn the mechanics of the game now, otherwise you're going to struggle really late, uh, really hard later. And I'm too old to care about learning those mechanics. <laughs> You know, I was never any good at blocking in any for Like I was like playing like Tekken and Mortal Kombat and all that stuff. As yeah. Kid. I never, ever blocked ever. Like I don't, I I didn't even know that you could now. block in them. <laughs> I thought the whole point was just to kick the other one and yeah, to jump well, backwards and avoid it. I don't know. Stun lock. Stun blocking? lock's the way to go. <laughs> uh, so basically in this game, like it's all, it's kind of like the Dark Souls where it's all about, it's not essentially, it's not blocking. It's about timed dodging and parrying, which is kind of, it's the same button you press, but either you roll out of the way or you press it just in time to deflect a blow. And mm. my reaction time is not good enough to deflect <laughs> said blows. Uh, like 66% of other people have played this video game. But it brings it brought me to an interesting article that is essentially talking about the fact that only 33% of Xbox players had beaten this, uh, uh, this mission. But 85% of both PlayStation and Steam players have beaten this. Which says that Weird. because this game was on Game Pass, everyone on Xbox has downloaded it for free and said, oh, this isn't my thing. Whereas these people uh. that are either playing it on PlayStation or Steam, they've paid for it. Like, you, you better fucking play it. Like, you paid good <laughs> money for this game. You'll make it damn well that you beat that boss. That's a really so interesting was a point. Very interesting uh, metric yeah. that they figured that, that, um, well, that they correlated yeah. there. Yeah. It's nearly like we value things more when we spend money on them. Yeah, and I tell you what, if I had paid, at, you know, ninety dollars, I wouldn't have cared. I would be like, "Fuck this, can't be bothered." <laughs> but, but yeah, I'll, pl I'm very I'll play much, later. I'm very much guilty of that with a couple of games on Game Pass where I've literally like downloaded it, played it for five minutes, went nah, and just yeah. deleted it again. Like, yeah, because I'm just like, I'll just try it, give it a bash, and then just like, nah, it's not for me. Pass, and I probably would do exactly that for this. But at the same time, Ooh, if this for that. you. You know, you only paid fifteen dollars a week. Like some people could say it's bad value. Some people say it's good value being on Xbox Game Pass. But if I'd paid, you know, a hundred dollars for that game, I would still be like, I can't be fucked, and I just put it on the shelf. <laughs> oh. And that's and that's like you know, eight months of Xbox Game Pass. So for me personally, I think Xbox Game Game Pass is doing me well, even if I play ten minutes of a game and say, eh, not for me. If I'd bought that game, I would have wasted more money. Fair. But some people have the opposite well. opinion where they feel like Xbox is making a lot of money off of putting schlock on there and us playing the games. But, you know, there's quite a few games in there that I would like would have liked to play. Putting, just putting yeah. shit on there and being like, well, you got to subscribe <laughs> to watch the next season of 
What good shows? Do they even do any good shows? I don't even know. Okay. Yeah. Um, Physical I've, 100. Physical 100 is amazing. Yes. I've actually been watching uh, Outlast as well with my, my partner. Have you two seen that? It's basically Outlast. they drop four teams of people into the Alaskan wilderness and just say, survive for as long as you can with zero help. And whoever's left gets a billion dollars, basically. <laughs> like whoever lasts the longest. And they were, watching, uh, they were watching it last night and some dude just because he hadn't eaten in 14 days just passed out while he was cutting wood and just like smashed his head on a rock and had to get airlifted Jesus. out of there. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was and then they, they had like emergency call buttons or something. Yeah, so they got a flare so. gun and they can like sh- go anytime. Like obviously there's the film crew there as well, but you could literally see this dude like all these like – um. His interviews, you could just see him getting gaunt and more gaunt. Because he already, like some of the other guys that came in were a bit bigger already. They had a bit of chub on him where this guy was like, he looked pretty like healthy and chiseled and physical, which is great until Rookie you mistake. don't have any f- fat to burn. And he just, if you have to survive in the wilderness, yeah, you yeah. want to bulk the fuck up. Yeah. Hot tip. Uh- <laughs> so his body just immediately started eating himself and then he just went, went boop, and he went out. And then like <laughs> two kilometers away, like, this other team, they won a challenge. They got them a crab pot. So they were all eating like two, like they're called Dungeness crabs, like massive, like king crabs each. They're like, they're like three pounds each. And they're Jesus. eating like kings. Um, if you're a king of the Alaskan wilderness, I guess, like, you know, like <laughs> it's not great eating, but compared to starving and falling asleep, cutting wood with an ax, they're doing pretty well. I, I don't, I don't think fainting counts as uh, falling asleep, but sure. Why not? Yeah. If you take well, no, the first, the first time he had fallen asleep and the second time he just passed out, like standing, just went, he was like, oh, boom. see you later. <laughs> Airlifted out. So yeah, that's, um, that's what I'd be watching on Netflix. Cause yeah, I agree. There's not really much else on there. That's got too much chop. But yeah, physical 100 does look pretty insane. I haven't watched it yet, it's but so good. It looks so wild. good. Yeah, it's really, really good. I'll talk about sounds... that another time. I'll, yeah, I was going to uh, say, okay, well, all right. how about, what is your nerdiest thing? Because I'll, I'll pass it to you so we yeah. can change it up. Be spicy. <laughs> oh, he nerd... did a, he did a cur- curve, curve ball. Curve ball. Curve ball. Sports. <laughs> <laughs> you tried, Margie. That's what counts. Thanks, Basil. It's, yeah, it's absolutely what counts. <laughs> Over to you, Basil. Uh, <laughs> but my nerdiest thing actually bleeds into my nerdiest thing this week, which is a really, really exciting thing because I was a uh, – so my, my, I've been watching the third season of uh, Picard uh, lately. And so the first season of Picard, in my opinion, was fucking brilliant. Like it was the ending of Star Trek, the next generation that we never, oh. ever got. Uh, I was about to, I was just leaning in. I was like, what is Picard? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's about Jean-Luc Picard. Game. Yeah, it's about Jean-Luc Picard like now. So it's set like like years after the next generation. Like he's become an admiral, yeah. but he's sort of retired. He's got like his winery and shit now. But first season was really, really good. Second season, even though it had Q in it, and I love Q, it was kind of unnecessary. And this third season is just hot trash. Are you talking Q and on or? No, no, no. It's the... the... Space Q and on. <laughs> Space Q and on. Yeah, they the are. The being known as Q, who, I mean, really, if you think about him, he probably would be the brains behind Q and on because he just <laughs> likes to cause mischief and fuck around and stuff. So Q would actually, 100%, Q is probably behind Q and on, if I'm being completely honest. Are they but galaxy? That's... Are they up there? Is he talking about galaxy seeding? They're galaxy <laughs> seeding in the sky. I'm, I'm I mean, sorry. Q... I should stop talking about this stuff because we're going to get our <laughs> video pulled off YouTube again. So apparently we were oh, talking yeah. about, we got pulled out for being anti-vax rhetorical the other week because we are joking about anti-vaxxers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh shoot, now we're going to get cancelled again. Right, we're going to get cancelled again. Topic, stay on topic, stay on topic. But anyway, <laughs> so I've, been, I've been watching Picard and I wasn't really that stoked on it, but I went to sleep that night and I dreamt about the episode that i was watching right so I, there's like a, a scene in it where like you know they're fucking around there's a big there's a big ship in front of them that's trying to attack them and then the enterprise their fucking ship it's not the enterprise it's another one shoots off and the other one gives chase and so i'm dreaming this in my sleep <laughs> i'm not kidding it's like they're they're through they're being chased through the warp by this other ship and they pull out at Yavin 4, right in front of the Rebel fleet, and then the Rebel fleet from Star Wars <laughs> attacks this other ship and saves the Enterprise. <laughs> and so in my That's brain, crossover. 
the, the the ultimate crossover. So the Rebels save Captain Picard in my dream, but it was so real. Like it was shot like a like I could see everything, like the fucking rebel fleet coming around from Yavin 4. <laughs> and it just looked so sick in my mind. And now that's all I want to happen is the crossover that everyone would fucking hate. Because I need to see yeah. this happen now because my brain came up with it while I was sleeping. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you can make it happen. That could be a life's work. Finally making Man, Star Trek and Star Wars look, nerds like each other. I had I had the most fucked up dream, which this happened last night. And it was like, I think it's because I've been away for a few nights sleeping with my bandmates and they're all snorers and I can't sleep. But I am also a snorer, but at least I don't keep myself awake with my snoring. Anyway, <laughs> my dream last night was fucked up. I joined a blood cult because I was trying to immigrate to Canada on a boat. And pretty much I became a blood witch through the sacrifice of a lot of children. I'm talking like chewed up, spit out child carcasses of pointy bones, gristle and blood in mounds on the ice that were like set up with like these big wooden X's for flailing people on. And through that, I smeared the blood on my face and got the powers to defeat to defeat a Lovecrafty and horror that lived in the waters outside of Canada, which was my job, except because I became the blood witch, I was about to be sacrificed the next night. I tried to escape, but I was stuck inside a church. So, Can you please stop taking your medication? <laughs> <laughs> How fucked is that? <laughs> yeah, uh, I agree. Yep, It's a little bit rough. It's a little bit <laughs> rough. Uh, uh, if you want to know what a chewed up child carcass looks like, come inside Man, my head. I'm good. I am, <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very, very good. Uh, I'm well, really I mean, scared. I do Maggie, find I... it funny. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you go that. Right. I was going to say, I do find it funny here talking about your whole band snoring because like whenever we've ever had to have a new member, the first thing we ask them is if they snore. And if they say yes, they're like really down the list on if they're going to be in the band or not. Because we're like, well, I don't know. I don't want another snorer. Uh, you see, I'm a girl, so I've got that going for me. Apparently, my si- my sister snores harder than anyone I've ever. She snores like a freight train. Like I like back obviously when we were kids, we were all living in the same house. I could hear her from pretty much the other end of the house. Like I feel so sorry for her boyfriend. I don't know how he sleeps because yeah, nah. Girl, nah, girls, you fucking, nah, that's no excuse. Snores like a freight train. <laughs> I've, I've been cursed with that my whole life. So, no. Nah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, Maggie, uh... I'm terrified after, after your revelation of blood witching and, you know, sacrificing children and whatnot. But uh, what, what is your nerdiest thing for this week? I hope that's not Canadians. it. <laughs> Canadians. Eh? Canadians. No, um, I'm back on I'm back on the reading train after being off for a while because I don't know why. Hmm. Anyway, so I got two books on the go at the moment. I am reading Kafka on the Shore by Murakami because I am a fiend for Murakami. Is like weird fantasy realism stuff is just so good. Like making fantasy without making it high world fantasy or without making it fantasy as we know it he does it so well like he just does the weirdest shit and you're reading and you're just like oh yeah this is oh all right we've gone for murakami like it just kind of goes like and you're like here we go like down the rabbit hole it's very it's sick i love murakami for that and i'm also reading the guilty feminist which is a book from like the first podcast i ever listened to which is called the guilty feminist and it's like about kind of about being like a feminist in a position of privilege and like I'm a feminist but like you know I also uh, something guilty that you do you know like have it a bit better than some other feminists yeah like you know and you and you kind of and you kind of acknowledge like I'm a feminist but the other day I went for an extra 20 minutes on my run because I ate a block of chocolate and I felt really bad about it even though I'm a feminist I shouldn't care about it or like you know I've got like I'm a feminist, but yes, all of the wallpapers in my house on my digital things are pictures of Chris Hemsworth and not my own children. <laughs> like, it's stuff like that, which I'm like, yeah, that's valid. So um, it's really good, though. And it was uh, – there was just, like, this really fantastic passage of, like, um, writing about how <laughs> the plow – invented the patriarchy and it was fantastic because pseudosumers became agrarian and needed physical upper body strength to um you know work the plows and the fields and stuff and you know to get all the stuff done women became more of the inside role than the outside and so on and so forth and it went from there and it was just like damn plows there you go um it's it's a very cool concept but I kind of 
agree. Like, if you think yeah, about I mean, it. Yeah, because, yeah, because, like, like when it comes to, like, like hunter-gatherers, so, like, there is no, like, you know, kind of any body shape like could there, be a hunter-gatherer kind of thing. Yeah, it's, anyone could be a hunter, anyone could be a gatherer. Like, mm. you know, some women were great hunters, some men were great gatherers. But as soon as like we started settling down, putting down roots and needing to do like some heavy lifting, it yeah, was so like, soon in the game. step back. <laughs> yeah. <It's> like, <laughs> and yeah, there you go. So you could say that the plow uh, was the first uh, part of the patriarchy, maybe. Interesting. Very interesting. Interesting. Something to contemplate. Hmm. Anyway, so that was uh, me being cool and going back into reading. That's what's on the bookshelf, on the bedside table, whatever it is at the moment. Yeah. Anyway. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Well, on that note, though, we're going to move in to the medium beat for this week. And uh, Margie, you've uh, you've got a bit of a severely underrated uh, adults only edition, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, you know it's you know it's going to be dark. I think severely underrated things for adults are stuffed toys because you know what they're really comforting. This is if you're mm. watching on video, this is Elliot, my stuffed moose. He's dressed as a lumberjack because he's Canadian, um, but he doesn't participate in blood magic. It's okay. Uh, I went to Albury this weekend. Like, anyway, I went away on tour this weekend with my band and I brought Elliot with me and he went sightseeing and (laughs) I cuddled him every night. And he's a great friend. And it's, uh, I love them because they activate my social safety. Like, I don't know if you guys were a kid and you cuddled something to go to sleep. Um, Mm -hmm. Or like, especially if you're a fidgeter or anything, like having a stuffed toy is like, it's like having a pet that doesn't run away from you and betray you by biting you. Like <laughs> it's so nice. And like, because like humans can be in like a couple of different states. You could be in your social safety state and then you encounter a new thing and you're going to feel threatened or excited by it. Like you're either going to, it's like a fight or flight response. You're either going to be like excited by it, not to fight it, but to like be like, what, Ooh, like what's this? Or you are going to be like, oh, fuck, i got to get out of here. Like, oh, this is bad, 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 bad. So, like, that's your two responses. And then both of those can lead to feeling overwhelmed as it progresses. So, like, when you are in those states of excitation to reach your social safety, you should have something in your toolkit that can make you feel calm, like a weighted blanket or maybe you put your legs up the wall or maybe you just have a cuddly toy. And so, like, if you go into your psychologist, you're like, I'm bringing a soft toy and it's going to make me feel more comfortable and grounded and safe while I'm talking. And I endorse it. I was very cynical, but the need has overtaken me and now I need to get Elliot some friends. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's bad. I really need to. He's so soft and he's so nice. Might I suggest one of these? <laughs> absolutely not that looks like something out of my dream no <laughs> for for those who are not watching it is a plushie of a face hugger from alien um, amazing full size I mean, as well. like full size and everything yeah that's very <laughs> impressive i feel like it would, would be nice to put your head back on too and like have like the uh, yeah it kind of like comes around your head like wrap that around. i think that would be quite comforting uh hmm. you got you got any plushies there josh I mean, I don't have any plushies with me, but I, I 100% back the idea. I mean, I haven't slept with a plushie for many, many years, but from birth until the age of probably 14, I had a like a doll that I slept with every single night and it was, his name was Bobby. I think it was a dog. It was like a weird amalgam of like, it was like, mm. a, it looked like a dog, but also a bear. It was weird. But like by the end of it, like Bobby lost most of the fur and everything like that. But anytime... I had a nightmare. I would wake up and Bobby had fallen off the bed. Like I wasn't holding Bobby as literally like, like, like fucking clockwork. If I ever in my sleep rolled over and dropped it, yeah. I would have a nightmare that night. And anytime I had it, I would never, ever have yeah. a nightmare. As why well, it had to come to friends places. It had to come everywhere with me. And then obviously like, you know, when, when you become a teenager, you get self-conscious. It's like, oh, I don't want people to know that I'm a, you know, a 14 year old boy who still like hugs a teddy bear. And so eventually I managed to like process past that through the power of denial. Um, but <laughs> That's how we process everything. hundred percent, a hundred percent. But no, I, I a hundred percent believe in the power of that because that was my protection for the first 15 years of my life. And I think for me, it's the same thing. Cause I had a blankie, not a stuffed toy, but I had yeah. like a knitted blanket and as a baby, like I, I could not be nursed to sleep. I just, they'd had to put me down with blankie and I'd be like, peace and just go to sleep. Like <laughs> that. So I was the dream baby. Like, just like, oh, we just could just put her down and she's oh, okay, easy. And like, so I cuddled blankie until I was about 14 when my mom goes, do you, do you think it's about time you should uh, 
stop sleeping with Blanky. I was like, why? She's like, you're going to bring him to all right, cool. Yep. <laughs> like she just kept bringing it up until I was like, she's like, well, just put it in a cupboard. It'll be very safe. I was like, mm. sorry, Blanky's still up there. Maybe it's time to bring him down to Melbourne. Uh, <laughs> Elliot and Blanky. It's a, it's a nice combo. Do you have, yeah, it's a, I guess you have a partner grant, so you don't really need to have something to cuddle at night. <laughs> yeah, I'm not one of you single nerds. <laughs> <laughs> but no, what, like, did you have it? Did you have a toy as a kid, though, Grant? Like, did you have something like that? Nah, not to sleep with. I was, I don't know, probably listening to music or thinking about building stuff with Lego, and then instead of going to sleep, probably just playing with Lego. So, I was <laughs> different comforts for different people, I guess. Yeah. You know, I'd rather. Yeah. I'd rather take my mind somewhere else and do something, I guess, to try yeah. and get my anxieties away. I think that's the only way I could put it into that situation. But yeah, I no, no, never really had like any special blankets or maybe when I was really young, but nothing that's stuck with me enough to remember it. So probably nothing that significant. Man. So. Yeah. I think, <laughs> but yeah, I think my hesitance to getting my first toy, I didn't buy it for myself. It was brought back from Canada for me because I said to bring me back a baby moose or a squirrel or a chipmunk or a beaver because that's what I want as a pet. And I was brought back a moose. So, uh, cause my sister-in-law is Canadian. So I was provided for, but would- it took me, I think it took me so long to like come around to it because we're so trained to be like stuffed toys are for it's fucking kids. weirdos. Yeah. Like it's, it's kids and like those real weird adults who have like a whole bed of stuff, like plush toys. <laughs> but I'm like, I, I already have that. Apparently it's like a cripplingly female thing where you have like, a million pillows on your bed. I love I love heaps of pillows on my bed. I like being able to set myself up in any which way. And then now I'm like, I'm going to add to that. I'm going to throw in a million stuffed toys. Making my bed's going to take half the day, uh, but it'll be worth it. And then my cat can hide in there. It'll be real cute. Just wait till you get to the point where you have to iron it before you're comfortable laying in it. That's... Oh, no. when, yeah. I, don't, I don't think yeah. I own an iron. I'm not that yeah. organized. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you got to the apex of like super, super bed. <laughs> super <Crazy>. bed. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm very excited. I'm going to, uh, yeah, going to Taiwan this year for no no reason. <clears throat> uh, TB, TBC. Uh, <laughs> and you bet your ass my luggage is going to be full of cute stuff <laughs> toys. Apparently Hell they have yeah. bears over there, so I'm gonna go see a bear and then I'm gonna stuff it. No, get a stuffed you, toy of it, obviously. Can you bring yeah, me back, like a, they, back a bear? Bring me back a real bear though. I don't want a I don't want a fake bear, I want an actual bear. Like the see sun bears, do. is that what they have over there in Taiwan? The ones with like the real long tongues? Is that them? I can't remember. I think they get called sun bears. They have like a different colour. They're like black and gold or something. I don't know. They're very pretty. Um and they have bears. <laughs> Yeah. Grant's going. Grant's going to look it up because now he is determined to know what kind. Yeah, of Yeah, well, I need to know. No, nah, it's just that. What, uh, kind of, what kind? Of, what kind of bear Josh is getting as Formosan a Formosan black bear? Oh, because yeah, because they used to call it Formosa. Yeah, okay. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's, it, they've just got a Taiwanese black bear. It's not not the sun bear. It's a different one. I'm thinking of. It might be. It Taiwanese. might be Ch- China. If I encounter a Taiwanese black bear in the wild, what do I do? Do I try and fight it? Um, or no, do just, I just be like, again? hey, can you just? Just say, hey, can you just come with me? Josh really wants a pet bear. Ni hao. It, un- it will understand you and it will come with you back to Australia and then you can just bring <laughs> it over and then it'll sit next to me for the podcast and it'll be adorable. Well, I think the general rule with bears is don't run. Otherwise, you're done. Yeah. Because as soon as you run, you're like, okay, oh, he's not a predator. He's prey. And then they will eat. No, I, the shit I heard like there's a rhyme. Like if it's black, fight back. If it's brown, lie down. If it's white. You're dead. You're fucked. Yeah, Something yeah, like right. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was, it's a really good rhyme. Yeah, if, <laughs> if it's a remember. polar bear, it will actively hunt you. Like <laughs> other other bears will be like, oh, okay, you're just you're here. I don't. I'm not that happy about it. But polar bears will be like, I want that. I'm gonna eat that person. <laughs> you look. Yeah, because they're starving. It's not person. their fault. Fucking hell. We've Actually, we've made the only them ones starving. not starving. The polar bears. I think they're the only thing that's not starving up there. <laughs> well, on the Apart island of Svalbard, you can't go anywhere unless you have a shotgun with you because mm. there are that many polar bears. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> is, I don't know how much I like it. But. Well, it, as I was talking about with that Outlast show, apparently the place we're staying in Alaska has 2.5 bears per square mile. Sick. 
Yeah. It's hot. And they're grizzlies too. So they're half they're a bear is metal as fuck. It means yeah. that they fought each other, tore each other in half. Yeah. But they're spread it out. They're still living, still kicking it on. <laughs> oh, zombie bears. Oh man. Yeah, that's fuck yeah. yeah. Has <laughs> anyone here seen when seen Cocaine Bear yet? I need to go and see Cocaine Bear. I really, really do. I um, Shazam came out comes out week. this week as well, oh, so yeah. I've got, I've got a lot of films I need to see at the cinema. Movie see, day. Like, there's a I cinema in Burnie, but it plays the same movies at every time, every day. Like they don't change up the session time. So I've like wanted to see Cocaine Bear, but it's on at four fifteen p.m. every day. I'm like, well, either <laughs> I have to watch it fifteen minutes after I finish work if I don't have anything else to do before I leave. <laughs> Or I have to watch it in the middle of my Saturday or Sunday and lose it like entire afternoon. But yeah, but like also, but like how do they like think about that? Because like Cocaine Bear is clearly made for adults. What adult yeah. is going to the cinema at four fifteen on a weekday? Tasmania is like, a different place, man. Yeah, <laughs> different place. <laughs> but there'll be like there'll be like there's probably one movie that's not that good that's got like seven showings. Fair. Let me tell Fair. <laughs> oh, he's looking it up. I will find out. Right up to now. date, real is, time. Yeah, we're going to find out the ins and outs of what's going on in Bernie. Yeah, this because... Bernie life. Okay, yeah. so 60, 65 has three sessions a day, which is the new Adam Driver movie. Champions, which I've never heard of, also has three sessions a day, and Scream Four. Champions looks really cute. Scream Six. It's yeah, Scream Six. Um, but Champions looks really cute, but it's uh, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson's a douchebag uh but basically it's about he was like he was like the coach that was going to be the next big coach in the nba and then he gets in like a scuffle gets kicked out he has to go and do community service and ends up doing community service teaching a whole bunch of uh intellectually challenged people how to play basketball and the entire Mm. supporting cast is actually intellectually challenged uh uh actors and stuff like that and it looks fucking adorable but it looks like it's really funny as well it's like then then does the team take on the nba um, I, uh, because that, I, if it was if it was made in the '90s, they would. He would go and train exactly them, what happened. and they would no, overcome I, everything. No, it's, it's it has it. It seems to have that same trope of like you know he becomes really good in that, and then he kind of coaches these kids up, and then I assume at the end they're going to like offer for him to go back to the NBA, and he's going to be like, no, I want to stay teaching these kids. It's all like wholesome and shit like that, and he's not going to. Yeah, because like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get back. paid for it, so I want to stay doing this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sick. Yeah. Yeah, believable, absolutely very mm. believable. Yeah, he's not gonna absolutely be like, oh wait, I would. <laughs> there's no way I would want to make millions of dollars. No, yeah, no, just... no. money. Fuck, who needs that these days? No one. But on on that note, though, that sort of leads us into our uh, main beat for the week because this week we're talking main about. Beat. <laughs> This week we're talking, you did, you did. And I I love it. I really do. But this week we are talking about the, the like representation within, uh, you know, media, film, television, that kind of stuff, but specifically within, uh, the, uh, the neurodivergent spectrum. So ASD or to, uh, ADHD, things like that, because, you know, the, the conversation around, you know, representation in general has obviously been very, very big over the last couple of years. Like as we're recording this, uh, why Michelle Yeoh just won was the first Asian actor to ever win uh the best actress and best she's not supposed to be best act, best female actress yeah best actress um yeah, yeah. so she's first uh, yeah Asian American woman to ever do that um and so, so obviously the idea of representation has changed but you know for for us in particular we we wanted to kind of focus on yeah uh you know yeah autism ADHD representation within uh, this sort of realm. Um, but Margie, I feel like w- we need uh, a definition and you are the queen of scientific and medical <laughs> definitions and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, yes. we, we look to you to define these things because you're so good at it. So would you, would you like to run us through a definition of what we're talking about? Right. So uh, I did not know this until I was looking this up, but the term was defined by a sociologist who is neurodivergent herself. So she is on uh, the ASD spectrum, um, Judy Singer. And in the late 1990s, she came up with a word to describe conditions like ADHD, autism, dyslexia, and that is neurodiversity. So her hope was to shift the focus and discourse away from about ways of thinking away from, you know, the like it's deficits, disorders, impairments, and to think about it in a different way. So it's an approach to learning and disability that argues diverse neurological conditions result from normal variations in the human genome. 
I'd compare it to hair color, skin color, how many freckles you get, all that kind of stuff. Like the human genome is wild. I mean, we're like 98% chimpanzee, like, you know, like, and the fact, and our brains all work differently. So, and, um, it, it describes the idea that people experience and interact with the world around them in many different ways. And there's no one right way of thinking, learning, behaving. And it emphasizes that differences are not deficits. Um, so most commonly it is for people with ASD or ADHD. Um, and like, I mean, the understanding among of ASD has come so far, like in my lifetime, you know, like, so, cause it didn't used to be autism spectrum disorder. It used to be Asperger, Asperger's or Asperger's. I mean, South Park's done <laughs> Asperger's. We've all seen it. Um, <laughs> and autism and autism was for kind of like, if you were, if it impacted your function, like severely and Asperger's was like, oh, they're a bit weird. Like that was kind of it. But like, um, so autism and the spectrum disorder, it's had by about a, one in 150 Australians. So it is common. Like, I mean, it's a spectrum. It's a lot too, higher so. than I expected. I expected like, like one in, you know, one or 2000, but that's, yeah, yeah. That's quite a lot. About one in 150. And I think one of the, I think that number comes about from how far we've come in diagnosis. Cause it all used to be studies about little boys who, and like, oh, my kid was nonverbal, blah, blah, blah. But girls present in completely different ways to boys. And also you can have like, it can be more of a, like some people have more of a late stage onset. Some people have more of an early stage onset. Um, so it's, it's deficits in social emotional reciprocity. It's, that's a common thing with ASD. So having the wrong emotional response or no emotional response, you know, or, fa or struggling with back and forth conversations and you don't know how to sharing and connecting with people is hard, you know, and you don't have the right non-communicative non, non behaviors. So, you know, you might not make eye contact or you do no facial expressions and you might have trouble maintaining relationships too. Um, and you might also have stuff like repetitive behaviors of um, repetitive patterns of behavior, interests or activities. So you might have like a bit of a tick, things that you do. Some people do like have to line things up in color. Some people have uh, echolalia um, where they have to like repeat something that they've heard. Um, and you might be really rigid uh, and you might have hyper or hyposensitivity to input. So like I go crazy about certain noises. That's like one of my big things, like mm -hmm. absolutely mad. And then ADHD is different and it affects about one in 20 Australians, which is nuts. Jesus. That's about <laughs> 1 million people in Australia alone. That's fucking huge um mm. and it's often associated with stuff like depression mood or conduct disorders and substance abuse um so and it's really and you can all either be inattentive or hyperactive or a combination of the two so you know hyperactive is what we always used to think of of like a kid running around the classroom you know like hanging off the ceiling fans but it's also just as likely to be the kid who's sitting there just staring out the window like zero connection to the world going on and you know and it's but the problem with stuff like this is you know how how do you diagnose it diagnosis is still being worked on like the dsm-5 can't and it also can't just diagnose that you're neurodiverse it, it like um the diagnostic statistical manual five is what the dsm-5 is it's got a list of symptoms you have to check off a certain number they have to have presented for a certain amount of time but it doesn't allow for stuff like to be a bit flexible or it's like you're kind of ADHD, kind of ASD, like mm. you're, you're something. And it like, <laughs> and you know, and it does have dyslexia and dyscalculia in the DSM-5 and they're also considered neurodivergent things. But then there's other stuff that can be considered neurodivergent and it's up to the individual. So some people think, um, consider cerebral palsy to be neurodiversity and some people don't um, and stuff like that. So, and yeah. mental health conditions, like are not like like mental illness is not traditionally seen and disability traditionally isn't seen as being neurodiverse but it can be associated with it so it's this it's a it's a corner that's been defined there's a lot of research to be done there's a lot of work to be done but like we're starting there's I mean the portrayals have come a long way <laughs> so mm, they, that's they something have they 100% have you know like I, I I think when most people think of 
it. I think most people's kind of first experience with it on like the big screen or anything like that was obviously Rain Man and What's Eating Gilbert Grape. They seem to be the two that people kind of. I've never seen What's as, Eating Gilbert Grape, but I have seen Rain actually, Man. What's Eating Gilbert Grape is actually really, really good. And like, is it a parasite? <laughs> no, Gilbert, Gilbert Grape is like the uh, the older brother in this family who's like mum's so big she can't leave the house Leonardo DiCaprio plays like the youngest son and he's what they would have called back then low functioning like he he's very like like presenting a lot of like you know he doesn't function properly in many many different ways um mm. and it's yeah I, I think like these two films really did sort of start the conversation and a lot of people like lauded them for that but they've also kind of created a, a lot of not intentionally damaging ideas, but they've basically said like people have gone, oh, okay, so Rain Man is a high functioning autist and Leonardo DiCaprio, I can't remember his character's name, um, is a low functioning autist. And that was sort of like, this is what they are. They're either like savants or they are like incapable of functioning whatsoever. And there wasn't really anything in between that. When and I so was a like, kid, yeah. I wanted to be a savant so badly. I was like, <laughs> fuck, I just want to be a, I just, I just want to be really good at something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I met one when I was like, when I was like 18 and you could give this kid any movie and he could tell you all the credits for it, like including like directors, producers, stuff like that. And then it'd be like, oh, that producer. And he'd tell you everything else that the producer had produced. And then you'd go through that and say, that direct, that film, who's the director. And he would list, it was like, it was amazing. Couldn't do anything and then, else. And then he like, turned into like that movie, Lucy, where she gets all the brain function. He turned into IMDb, <laughs> didn't he? Is that pretty it? Much. He's, <laughs> he's, I, I'm pretty sure they just turned him into IMDb basically, yes. I was um, going to say that must absolutely be on the list of mundane superpowers. <laughs> that's 100%. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But I think like because I was – I found this amazing article. Uh, it was uh, from The Guardian uh, written by a guy called Simon Hattonstone. Um and basically is like the, the, the title for it is, you know, why do they have to be brilliant? The problem of autism in movies. And he has uh, an autistic daughter and they were watching, I think they were watching Rain Man. Um, but she turned to him at one point and literally asked the question is why do they, why do they have to be brilliant? Cause in the film, like, you know, and stuff like that, it is, you know, it's Rain Man or it's Mr. Robot or it's fucking like house, house you'd probably define like on the spectrum as well. So like when it, when it shows autism on film and whatnot, it's always usually like high functioning, hyper intelligent, like like mm. exceptional human beings that are just like a bit me. Odd. Yeah. <laughs> or like or if they like kids with ADHD, it's like fucking Dennis the Menace. Like it's yeah. it's you know, and so yeah, it's a really great article. I'll I'll link it in the show notes because it's a really I think really that movie ruined baked beans for me. That is an interesting discussion as well, because I guess in the fact that it's, it's, it sounds exploitative, but you use these characters because you want them to be an exciting, interesting character. So I think the idea of putting them in there and just making them as understated as possible probably loses a bit of flair for why they're using that character. I'm not saying this is right by any means, but I'm saying this, no. that's probably where the thought process comes from. It's like, well, if we're going to use this condition of this person and we're going to make it really exciting to watch, we're going to have to go you know, mm. either, a, a, you know, extreme sides of the spectrum. Because realistically, how many movies do we see that are just about regular people doing regular things? Like, we don't go right. to see that. But it doesn't I mean, mean it's not problematic at the same time. Like, no, it's, 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 that's it's all the, we get. It's the representation question, yeah, I, though. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's like, I feel like there should be a Bechdel test except for other kinds of diversity in movies. So like you're going to have to can, explain what that is because I Oh, so yeah. So is. okay, the Bechdel <laughs> test is a test. It wasn't invented by Bechdel, but it was popularized by her where the concept is if a movie passes it and that means it's got a it it shows women in a decent light and not just as like commodities is if two women have a conversation that is not about a man in the movie. So if two women can have a conversation that's not like, oh, my God, Greg's so hot. Like, oh my God. like <laughs> you know, right. so like um, and if they could do that, it means that it shows that the women aren't just there to prop up the male characters, that the women mm. characters are. I think there's some exceptions, like if there's a supervillain about to take over the world and it's two women <laughs> talking about like how to defeat him. Maybe that's different, but that's the that's a general idea. And so I'm thinking of like a Bechdel test, except for 
diversity. Like how often is someone in a wheelchair in a movie where it's not brought up at some point, like where it's mm. not like, oh, oh, like they make a joke or they say something kind of inappropriate, then they go like, yeah. or there's like, um, oh, let's oh, run. And they're like, I can't. And it's like, you know, like, you know, they just obtuse or it's, you know, you have an ASD person in there who's an idiot savant or who's banging their head against the wall in the corner. Like, you know, can, can we, can we have it like where it's just like, they just have ASD and that's it. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. like. Just make it seem like it's normal it. and they just belong there. Yeah. I was yeah, that. absolutely. Well, yeah. And, yeah. And I guess that's like what a lot of people are kind of pointing out these days and maybe sometimes they're right. A lot of times I feel like they're wrong. It's like when, you know, people want to show more representation these days, but they don't know how to write it properly. And so they make yeah, it. Yeah, ham, um, ham Yeah, they it. ham it up. And it's like, it's, it's, there are times where you like, it, it, I'm 100% all for it. I fucking love seeing more representation, mm. uh, like in every single way. But there are times where I will watch it and be like, you didn't write that because you cared. You write it, yeah. you wrote that because you wanted to be like, oh, look at me, look at me. And it's yeah, like, the, yeah, sometimes it's written where you're almost watching something and be like, you're making, you're like, it's like you're trying to make me feel like this is unnatural, that this person mm. just shouldn't be here like they are every day. Like, it's like you're like, you're making, you're making, you're making such a them point uncomfortable. Of it. Yeah, you're making such a point of it that it seems like, it's almost like you're saying this is unnatural, but it's not. It's just like these people are here every day. Why can't we just, they just be here every day? Like I don't, I don't see the reason why. It's sometimes, yeah. not, not absolutely not every time, but sometimes it's just really, really just, hammered in and i feel yeah. like it, it to me it makes it try, seem like they're making it like this isn't natural so we're going to show you what it should be like when it's like you what it should be like is it should be natural and I, i'm yeah. perfectly happy that this character is here and that's yeah. fine yeah and there are people who have done it like perfectly like that fucking was yeah the third absolutely. episode of the last of us with fucking frank and the other guy that i've forgotten like I, I think that's one of the best pieces of fucking cinema I've ever, like television I've ever seen. I think like how they portrayed those characters and their relationships, it always felt so genuine. It always felt so natural. It didn't feel like they were just like mm. throwing it in the face just because. Whereas like, yeah, mm. there, there are other times where it's like, e even just like, you know, like it's a passing camera shot and whatnot. There's like, you know, two people holding hands. It's like, yeah, it's cool. It should be in the background, but it's like, because the camera just pauses and focuses on it, makes sure that you see this point that's in the background. We are being like, inclusive. Yeah, look yeah, at it's, us. It's, yeah, it's it seems like we're not trying to make this natural. We're trying to tick something off. Which yeah, I think exactly. Like it's, it's good. You still need that representation, but I think it is, it does, for people that don't agree, I think maybe it is slightly damaging because they feel like they're being, their nose rubbed in it and they're being told that the way they live is wrong, which is probably true hmm. to some point. But I think it's not the best way to convince someone that this is normal. It is absolutely yeah. normal. And I think yeah. it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not a bad thing. It's definitely not a bad thing, but I think it, it could be done better. But I'm mm. also think, not yeah, there, there, there are people who just person. don't do it like with the best. I mean, maybe they do it with yeah. the best intentions. I don't know, but they don't think about it well enough before yeah, they no, do it. Yeah. There's some people that are just doing it, it to it, get It always ends up being instead a, of actually it's a, caring it's a, about it's a, it. It's a plot point. It's, you know, like, because mm. I wrote down a list of still some good examples, but like, um, like Shine with Jeffrey Rush, great Australian film about mm. like a savant sort of genius piano player. Prodig prodigal, prodigal, pr prodigal, prodigal, whatever, prodigal. however it goes, prodigal, prodigal. prodigal. <laughs> uh, yes, um, and it's still, it's good, it's really good, but it's still, I mean, there's, there's the plot point, um, you know, like, like there's the TV show The Good Doctor, which I don't mind because I don't mind a trashy hospital drama from time <laughs> to time, but they do show some of like the benefits like the pros and cons of it like he's really cool and calm under pressure and he's fantastic as a doctor because he knows it all but like you know mm. when they show like how his brain works you're like it, is that is that all right all right and like you know they'll show <laughs> him him having a freak out and it's like yeah like people with asd do have trouble regulating emotions and so they do have freak outs but like some of them you're like they're they're a bit bang your head against the wally um yeah. which um you know i but that, that's the thing um asd is you've met one person with asd you've met one person with asd everyone yeah. is so different and that's the whole neurodiversity beauty well it's just um, but that, any, yeah. any human on the planet you met one person you met one person no one's the same yeah, yeah. no exactly. matter who you are um, no matter if you're neurotypical neurodivergent like every person's different everyone's got their different things they've gone through they it, it's all it's all a spectrum it, there's 
there's no such thing as normal. But like everyone's different. Like there's things that we might sure. consider typical, but yeah. I feel like normal is not really a thing. And we're all we're all just as different as each other, even if we're all lumped into different groups. Uh, that's the way I see it, anyway. Agreed. Agreed. We like we like it. Um, <laughs> someone who is definitely neurodiverse um, and depends on what version you watch in the books. <laughs> I don't see it, but maybe that's because. I don't, I don't know, um, is Sherlock Holmes, um, Ben, yeah. Benedict Cumbersnatch. Cum- Benedict Cumberpatch. What a boss. Whatever his name is. Um, Penguin um, does such like an ASD portrayal of him. And it's like, mm. that kind of checks out. And like, I guess that's the directorial direction that they went. And it was kind of cool being like, this guy's a super genius freak, amazing detective who isn't actually a detective, but mm. you know, and he just has these tendencies. Um, then you've got yeah. like Arbed where it's like never really kind of mentioned that. <laughs> mm. it's, just, yeah, um, it's, just, it's just politely assumed between the entire community. It's just like, yeah, yeah, Arbed's definitely one of us. One yeah, Ar- of us. Arbed's, yeah. And then, I mean, <laughs> then he says stuff like, is this a social cue? Which is like, it's his best line. I love it. I love it so much. Like, because like. I wish I knew. I wish I knew Arbed. I really do. <laughs> it's really, I have no idea if this is a social cue. It might be. Um, <laughs> and another one that's done really well was. um. It's got Josh, what's his name? He's a comedian from Melbourne. Uh, blonde. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, like a little button, button nose. I know, I know the one you mean and I can't think of his name. Oh, fuck. Uh, well, okay, so he's in a show called Everything's Gonna Be Okay um, where he, like, takes over custody. Josh Thomas. Uh, Josh Thomas. That's it. Name. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I, I just spat, you know, I was relieved. Uh, so he's in a show called Everything's Gonna Be Okay where he, like, takes over custody, custody of his younger half-sisters custody. and one of them – because I, I can't – um, yeah, and <laughs> one, of them, one of them is ASD and it actually touches on some stuff like sexuality for the neurodiverse, um, autistic identity, all of this kind of stuff, which is like – it's really big in the care space at the moment in research, um, something related to work. I ended up going down a rabbit hole of papers about like sexuality and occupational therapy stuff. So like, mm. you know, like – how can you be sex positive, you know, after a stroke and how can you teach people about effective masturbation after a stroke and, or like for neurodivergent people. And I was like, this is a fascinating field, but I'm not going into that too much here, (laughs) but like it, but it touches on stuff like that, which is really Mm. like, yeah, yeah. you know, isn't discussed. (laughs) Yeah. I've, uh, I've made good friends with a, a human being who uh for a while congratulations i know right? first I'm, one I know, well, i'm really proud one. of you josh very <laughs> impressive uh but no a, a dear friend of mine uh, i try and tell the story without going into too many details but worked in uh the oldest industry that ever there was um and one of the girls that she worked with one of her biggest paying clients was a, a person who like literally like was what people call quote unquote low function, but it was just like, he couldn't take showers. He needed someone to bathe her. And it turns out this is quite a big thing within the sex industry that a lot of workers will do like like non-sexual acts, like things like that as part of a service for people who can't do it for themselves, just flat out refuse to do it under any, it like wasn't even a sexy thing. Like it was just literally like, yeah, get, getting workers to come in and do things like bathe them. And it is apparently like, I don't know heaps about it, but apparently it is quite prevalent within the sex industry that things like that do happen. Yeah, absolutely. And like, that's another reason why you have to talk about it and mm. normalize talking about what it's like being on the spectrum. And my personal experience will be different to everyone else's. But if I could share something that helps someone learn something, Fuck yeah. Like then, you know, if I can make one person's journey easier, but then you've got stuff where they really misrepresent autism. Could you have you guys and neurodivergence? Have you guys got any examples of real bad misrepresentations? I I mean, the, the one that was like fairly obvious was, uh, Sia's music, uh, film or documentary or whatever it is a while ago. Um, it was, yeah, it, it was just, it, it, I I want to believe that she went in with the best of intentions to kind of show, oh uh, uh, yeah you know, yeah yeah, like the the this whole idea of how this neurodivergent person sees the world and everything that they kind of go through, um, but it, yeah it was it was more to me it was more the background that was really really 
kind of gross as mm-hmm. Sia took a lot of her uh, information from a place called Autism Speaks and Autism Speaks goal as a company is to eliminate autism as if it's like a disease or something that they can Did get rid of. she know that though, do you reckon? No, but she claims that she didn't know how bad they were at the start. And like, you yeah. know, if, if, if she did more than a, a cursory five minute Google up, she could have found out yeah. there was a lot of information about Autism Speaks. So I think she went like, you may, must've just Googled like companies that work in autism was the first thing that I'm, came up. Mm. Like, Honestly, I didn't imagine even from like someone of that level, like she probably didn't even look it up herself. It would have just been an yeah. agent. It just said, hey, find a foundation that deals with this. And they're like, yeah, no problems. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Exactly. It's kind of hard cool. to tell because I guess do we even know is she, a, is she on the spectrum at all? Like she, I know she it, writes, like has written like most of the top 10 music for the last couple of, you know, decade for a bunch of different people. So I wouldn't be surprised if she was a savant because she writes. It's interesting. Like all, but, but maybe yeah, you asked that. I've I've read a bunch of articles and no one has ever said anything about it. However, like, it, I mean, for the listener that doesn't know much about Sia, Sia, when she performs, She's she the comes one out with on the stage. Hair. She comes out like, yeah, with a, a wig that literally covers her entire eyes because she cannot perform if she can see the audience. And so it's like that, to me, it that is a, a flag. You know, that, that yeah. ticks well, a very, very big she box. She was so it's, also, wasn't she, was she not a drug addict when she was young? And then like stream and then like, cause she only started, I'm pretty sure she only started like writing music in like a thirties or something like that. And maybe even later. And then all of a sudden she was just, just exploded. So I was, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like it's probably it's interesting to know that. Cause I oh, guess so we, she covers her, she covers her face cause she's old. Maybe. Uh. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 could, that could also be it to be honest. Uh, but yeah, it's yeah. kind of interesting. Cause I guess we can at one stage say, ah, oh, you know, this person playing this guy, we're not representing it, but. How many people these days that are on the spectrum just go around telling everyone? So we, we I guess there is, there is, we don't actually know is probably one True. side of, we should say like, we don't actually know, but no, it's also we, in the case of the Sia stuff know. is like, yeah, maybe 10 minutes of Google, you could have sorted this shit out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, maybe uh, you could have just done a better Google or maybe she's got ADHD and can't. So maybe yeah. because yeah. she got distracted by a wig. Yeah. I guess that's the thing. Her. And it's, you know, the, the conversation that's happening around, you know, diagnosing people in general is obviously a really big thing at the moment. There is a lot of, you know, quote unquote, TikTok psychologists at the moment. And it's, you know, Mm. it it is that double-edged sword because obviously it's getting the conversation out there and there'll be a lot of people who are finding out this information for the first time. Like, like I, I was diagnosed very, very fucking late. Like I was only diagnosed a couple of years ago. Mm. Whereas I was diagnosed like two months ago. So, uh, so it's, yeah, yeah, so it's things that does happen to people with ADHD, later in their ASD, life. we've known for a long time. <laughs> oh, look at me. Yeah, yeah, it does happen to people a lot lower. And, like, yeah, the fact, like, you know, if these conversations were happening when I was, you know, 20 or fucking 15, like, I could have seen, like, everything that still haunts me from my childhood now. Like, like, I literally, like, I always think about, like, there have always been stories that I think about about my childhood that the on, the only memories I have about my childhood are all linked back to like ASD and things that like, like I, I look back now and be like, Oh, like my, my favorite example, I, I was like, I think mean, my only memory from primary school is this one memory where we were, I can still picture everything about it. We were in prep and we were sitting on the carpet. The teacher was like standing at the chalkboard because yes, I'm so old. We didn't have whiteboards back then. We had chalkboards. Yeah. Back in my day, it was all chalkboards, baby. <laughs> yeah. And she, she asked the question, she's like, what does the red light mean? And I instantly shouted out, go. And everyone laughed at me and the teacher just thought I was being a brat, but That's so I, <laughs> I couldn't verbalize out loud the fact that my brain was going, well, we're kids. So we don't drive cars. So when we see a red light, that usually means that it's time to cross the road because that was my main traffic light between like I would tr- cross from one side to the other to get to school every single yeah. day. And so my concept I mean, of how, traffic lights. It's not like you guys are driving machinery around and no. there's like a red warning light coming up. <laughs> you no. look at six. <laughs> <laughs> but that was like, I had no idea how to verbalize that. That's yeah, the, gr- the context brain... of what you meant. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And so it's like, yeah, my, my teachers palmed it off as me being a brat because I mean, for the rest of the time in primary school and all of high school, I absolutely was. But then my <laughs> other memory from like, it probably would have been like a couple of years later was a, a, like a very vivid nightmare that I still remember about my, we'd gone shopping at 
uh, the shopping center near my parents' house and it was in a two hour park. And I still vividly remember us running up the ramp and like out into the car park to get back to the car because it had been two hours. And as soon as we're like getting into the car, the car is literally sinking into the car park because our time was up. And it was like Aww. the worst nightmare I've ever had in my fucking life because we were out of time. And so anyone that knows me knows that I'm like early for everything now ever mm -hmm. because I have issues. And it's like that sits in my head and just uh gotta yeah, get there so car's gonna melt mm, to the floor otherwise I'm like, I'm literally either, I'm sinking into everything <laughs> or i sleep through it um but yeah like i i have a lot of memories which you know like especially being bullied and stuff as a child which was because i was autistic and i didn't know and that's why i had so much trouble relating to kids my age because i was like just it just never occurred to me to be like like the I was having a problem and so on and so forth. And, mm. you know, like I never crawled as a baby. That's one of, that's a very big warning sign. Mm. <laughs> Not a warning sign. That's a very big indicator of ASD. Did you just um, like and roll like, around the ground or something? Um, I <laughs> sat on my butt baby. with my legs out to the oh, side like a mermaid and I scooch <laughs> sideways around. Nice. Uh, I wouldn't eat at a table. I would only eat on the floor. Like I said earlier, I couldn't be settled. I had to self-soothe like and put myself to sleep. Like I had a lot of the indications and I was dropped mm. on my head when I was six months old. Thanks, mum. Um, it's all right. Fractured my skull. I'm fine. I'm not, I'm um, not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you on that one. Yeah. No, it's hilarious. <laughs> I, babies bounce. It's fine. Um, I wasn't that bad. It was already soft anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's like, there's just a nice like bit where there's no skull. You know, you could just kind of rub my brain. Uh, no. <laughs> Um, but you know, like it, it, it's kind of like one of those, but like, I didn't realize I was on the spectrum until because of the representations I'd seen and I'd mostly seen male representation and examples. I was like, well, I'm not on the spectrum. And then after years of chronic depression, eating disorders and just so much and like, oh, it must be BPD or something. Cause you can't regulate your emotions. Then my psychologist was like, ASD, like you're on the spectrum. And I was like, glass shattering and then my new psychologist first session goes something very neurodivergent about you I was like yeah I think I think I'm like I'm ASD I think you know it's what the last psychologist said she's like yeah you got ADHD I was like no, no I don't and like <laughs> so she pushed me to get the diagnosis and I very ADHD as well so hmm. which again is great because I wouldn't have believed her unless I had those like TikTok hmm. things that I was like ah. Oh, and like my, and also my ADHD friends going, Margie, you have ADHD, go fucking get <laughs> medicated. Like this, I'm sick of you stealing my pills. But like me watching all these TikToks, like, holy shit, this explains so much about me. And like, oh, it's, it's, it's a glass shattering moment. But you know, mm. like, do you think it's going to be a problem if people all diagnose themselves or I is mean, it a good thing? Yes. Does that and normalize no. it? Like, I, I think it normalizes it to the point. I, I guess like I kind of sunk in a, a lot of, like when I first raised this to my therapist a couple of years ago and we decided to go through everything and whatnot. And she kind of said to me at the start, it's like, even if we got to the end and like you weren't like, you could still like, people could still diagnose themselves as that if it helps them understand their place in the world. Like it's not hurting mm. anyone. If people are like, people say, Oh, you know, everyone's claiming themselves as ADHD and ASD these days. I was like, yeah, like, if that helps them see the world, if they're not using it as a crutch, if they're not using it as an excuse, like if you're an asshole and you'd be like, oh, it's because I have autism. No, go fuck yourself. But like, yeah, I, I don't think it's such a bad thing if it keeps the conversation going, as long as it's not used for sympathy, used as an excuse, used as a crutch. Like if, if it's used like the same way I look at fucking religion or astrology or anything like that. Like this world sucks. Like and if you're using you it as, yeah. Yeah. If your horoscope is ADHD. Oh, yeah. You know, I was, I was mean to that person, but you know, I'm a Leo. I'm allowed. Yeah, exactly. It's just, I have, I can't help it. I'm, you know, Ram. I stabbed that guy. I stabbed that person. I could not help it because the stars fucking told me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The stars Did you know Mercury's me. in retrograde? <laughs> Fuck. Like, like I had I'm to just, do it. I'm having a hard time right now. Yeah. Most people but, don't even yeah. know what retrograde is. <laughs> I still don't, to be honest. It but for it's sure just means it's spinning the other way. I Fuck, think it's going yeah. backwards. I yeah, don't know. It's, it's when it starts spinning the other way. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like, yeah, if if someone wants to frame the world that way and it's not hurting anyone, fucking go for it. Like, like yeah. since I've been diagnosed, my life has been 
better. And like people have comments in the past that, yeah, I talk about it a lot more now. So it's because I understand now. It's because I get so many things that I do that either I hid or I explained away or I thought like there was oh. just like something that's really severely wrong with me. It's like, no, like this is this is my frame for the world and I'm not hurting anyone by saying it. I don't use it as an excuse. I don't use it as a crutch. It's my understanding of my experience. And it explains your, some behaviours. It's like finding a jigsaw piece that finally goes – this is why you have a tendency to, I don't know, you know, in, insert like maybe a destructive behavior there. It explains why. And it's, yeah. and you can directly see this link between how you're thinking, how you're feeling, how you perceive it, the world, how you interact with it, how you cope with it. And that's the jigsaw piece. And like for people who have never had that, it's like, oh, it's just like, <laughs> oh my God, oh yeah. my Oh my God. Like, um, and like, and I think, you know, like, obviously, as I was saying, like ADHD is a lot more common than like I ever thought. And like, maybe that's a good thing as well. And embracing neurodiversity in our culture, as long as, as long as people who don't need certain supports are taking up yeah, supports I was that are offered that, by yeah, the public maybe, health system. Yeah, um, yeah, could cause be you know, a like burden. I'm, I'm high functioning ASD. Like, yes, I have trouble with stuff, but I can get it done with, because I've been years in therapy. It costs a lot of money. Yes. And, you know, but like I, I can still do stuff and I, I can live independently. And as long as people don't use it as a cop out, like I use it at uni, um, because I'm like, like, because I have ADHD, I have terrible time management and have never finished anything before the due date on my, in my <laughs> life. So I get automatic extensions and for work, um, you know, my psychologist was like, hey, some days Margie needs to work from home because she's just too, like, she's just having a day where she's, it's too much to go into the office or she needs noise cancelling headphones to work or something. And, you know, if it normalizes being able to do that and people making concessions and adjustments and opening the world up to more people, then fuck yeah. And like, mm. Yeah, maybe you are. Maybe it is all the high functioning people who are diagnosing themselves on, you know, TikTok. But maybe that means that they're out there advocating as well. Yeah. Because well, what going... I was going to say is at the same time, I believe the people that would self diagnose themselves are probably the same people that aren't probably going to go to seek professional help anyway, because they're just already going to concede that that's what it is. Mm. So, like, what else can I do? Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, I mean, yeah, Grant, as you were just saying, it's like, don't like, I, I, I'm sure that I could go and get meds and I could go and get all these exemptions and stuff like that. But I like, I haven't, I haven't needed it to this point. There's people that need it more mm -hmm. than I do. Right. They need that space that need that support much more than I do. Like, like my work is like, offered me is just like, oh, we can put into the system and like, we can offer you this thing of support. I was like, no, no, there's, there's people at my work who need that support. Like I am, <laughs> I'm yeah. very, very happy if yeah. I just if like. I'm, if I'm being honest, it's the chronic depression that fucks me over more. Yeah. And that that's affected when I don't manage, manage my ASD and ADHD. And I've been hospitalized for it before. And, you know, it's not a good time. And so that's why I take those precautions because I'm like, got to keep my stress levels managed so that my depression mm. doesn't go tickety-boo and then, you know, the cycle repeats itself. So, yeah. you know, some people, um, yeah, they got to, they got to do it. Like, that's, yeah, it's a good example of some people need it more than others. Like me personally, like we all joke about being on the spectrum, but I'm, I'm personally, I'm not diagnosed. I don't really talk about it much. Like I'll have a joke about it between friends because every single person I know tells me I'm autistic. <laughs> Um, we hang out in packs, Grant. Yeah, we hang out in packs. <laughs> it's it, it's very clear once you meet me when I'm air drumming all the time and stuff. But like, you know, I I see it as I'm me. I've gotten this far. Like, there's probably some quality of life things that could be changed. But also, I like I like being me. And if something, I I'm probably just terrified that if I take something, I won't be me anymore. So, I guess yeah. maybe that's a side of it. But. I feel like there's people out there, as Margie's saying, that probably need the help more than others. I'm, as Josh said, I've gotten this far without too many issues. Then I'm happy to just keep on and leave room for the people that, you know, need a bit more help to, you know, mm. stay in this hellhole. Yeah. And I guess yeah. like that that also brings up an interesting point where it's like if there is Tasmania. someone that's... <laughs> yeah. No, it's lovely down here. The beach is gorgeous. There's penguins if... 50 meters away. <laughs> if there is someone <laughs> that's listening that's like, that's maybe thinking about 
any form of medication. Like it's, it's so worth doing, but talk to people who've had it first. I've got like a, a lot of friends who are on Ritalin who swear by it. who think it's a really great thing. Other people say it's not so great. Like Grant, I I've been on some like hard, hard, like, like crazy people medicine before. And you're right. I, I was a zombie from the age of 20 to 23. I was on like, 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 I got too much into like stuff for schizophrenics and like yeah. I I was a zombie that whole time. I don't remember any of that time. It just it, it is a blank in my life, and I'm terrified of ever doing that again. And that's like I guess that's what pushed me to do more therapy and whatnot. Because like even like times and where I and crash that can be the thing with mm. not getting diagnosed is they go misinterpret symptoms and signs and problem behaviors that are associated yeah. with neurodivergence and they pull it into something that it's not all it takes is one shit psychiatrist and you're getting your brain knocked out by clozapine every night like mm. but you know, it, there's also the other side that if there's shared symptoms they could have something more s- s- serious that mm-hmm. you know has cumulative effects and they might just be uh oh, self-diagnosed myself with asd but actually maybe i've got like i'm 23 which is generally the onset of something like schizophrenia or yeah, like by, like multiple personality disorder and they could be like oh well it's just this other thing i won't go get it checked out so i guess the, it's it can be a two-sided sort depending yeah. on like you know the, yeah. the situation Absolutely. i guess that's that's just so much gray area in what we're talking about at the moment and i'm not sure and if anyone can tell be... on the video but my face is slowly getting wider and wider because the yeah, sun I is think moving you're... in between the blinds <laughs> in my face. I thought you were just becoming more like enlightened and filled with yeah. knowledge. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm turning a new leaf. I think I think it's the I think it's the reason why I have always been open since I was diagnosed with depression, and now since my ASD and ADHD diagnosis, like um, I try and be really open about it, and I say like my mental health is bad at the moment when it's bad because. I'm like, what's the point of lying about it? Like, you know, it's that stuff happens. And if anyone ever wants to like ask me or talk to me about anything, I, I will tell you because I think sharing knowledge and experiences is what helps move the human race forward. And we're finally at a point where we can share knowledge and experiences about being neurodivergent as, and mental health and all of that stuff, you know, you no longer have to understand depression by reading the bell jar. Um, you can, you can understand depression by talking to someone (laughs) and it doesn't have to be, but you know, seek professional help if you are worried and you can places like lifeline and all of those are great. If you just need a chat sometimes, Mm. if you just like my head's full of a million thoughts, I do need to chat, um, like reach out or call a mate or something, you know, it can be kind of mm. scary addressing all of these things and thinking about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, we've been getting bleak. <laughs> we have, but no, I, yeah. I, I think, yeah, if, if we're slowly bringing this whole conversation to a close, I think that's probably the most important takeaway is like, yeah, it's like the waiting lists for psychological help are very, very long, but there are so many services out there you can do like lifeline in the meantime. Um, but therapy is the best thing that I ever did like changed my life in so many ways, gave me so many like tools to be able to function far better than I ever have. Like fuck me, the person I was fucking 15 years ago, piece of shit. Like just oh, in every way 10 possible. years like, ago, you would not want to know me. Fuck. No, <laughs> no. But like, yeah, I, I think like I. I've not let, gotten and, past my piece of shit phase yet. Sorry. Everyone. <laughs> but Grant, you're a we good piece you. of shit. You're like Hanky <laughs> the Christmas poo. You're special. <laughs> I was hoping it was more like Bono's turd, you know, like 14 Zurix. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, thank you, yeah. Maggie, for lighting the mood. That that made me feel <laughs> a lot. But I mean, on that on that very, like, happy note, maybe we'll, uh, we'll wrap out that conversation right there. And um, reach out with mm. good examples of diversity. We haven't even touched on casting non-neurodiverse people to play neurodiverse people that's a kettle of fish you want to rip it open in the kettles in the comment section go for it fucking go nuts. write me go an nuts. email i love emails yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah. Email well, otherwise we have is <laughs> well, it's northside nerds at protonmail.com you can hit us up if you want is proton oh, mail um that's it's a nerdy mail yeah <laughs> I don't We're know. not on the spectrum at all. We just like no. Proton Mail. Yeah, we like we're at Hotmail because you can still make Hotmail accounts. Can you? 
No, nah, now they're out there. No, nah, they're like Outlook now. It's been replaced. By yeah, because like I still have an old Hotmail, but I, whatever I try to log into it, like I, I can't figure out how to do it, but maybe you have to go to Outlook.com. <laughs> you're actually just logging into like the Spice Road website and you're like, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what Hotmail's become now. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Meat spin. 100%. But dear listener, we're going to move into the final beat uh, for this episode. Uh, every week on the Northside Nerds Instagram and TikTok, we post the brilliant question, whether it's about eating Pokemon or who would win in a fight. Uh, and you leave some wonderful answers every week you do. It's always like... I, or I you get angry enjoy. at us for being vegans. Well, yeah, or, or you, yeah, you get angry at us for being vegan. Well, two-thirds of us for being vegans. Um, <laughs> Grant, you're included in this because you're not a vegan. Um, yeah, tell I, me don't about- I don't care. People be, be, people be their people, man. You know, do what yeah. you want. Yeah, 100%. yeah. If you, you're not your your views don't hurt anyone, so like, the, why why would you be angry? It's just people feel like they're being told that they're living wrong. That's why people get just angry. Don't follow yeah. girls home and harass them and yell sexually yeah. explicit comments at them, like happened to me yesterday, and yeah. it'll all be good. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty easy to not do that. I, I'd agree. <laughs> don't, like, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, yeah I, I do that on a daily basis, or I not do that on a daily basis. I, oh, I, was like, I, was I like, knew he looked familiar. Like, Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, he was trying to say, hey, Margie, hey, Margie, do you remember we're recording tomorrow? Hey, Margie, hey, Margie, hey, Margie. Margie, Margie. (laughs) Damn, those bike pants are really turning me on. Oh, rubbing to Yeah, it's real nice. Uh, Bike pants, (laughs) like it's not a sexy thing. It's just not (laughs) bike pants. Yeah, they were just wearing up because they were comfy. Sorry. Fair. No, I'm not judging you Anyway, um, Anyway. my sugar t-shirt, sexy or not, that's the question. (laughs) Absolutely. Depends which album. But no. (laughs) <laughs> the Friday question for this week is a very important one is if you could time travel and change just one event, accepting the consequences could be dire. What event would you change and why? Maybe Grant, let's start with you. I have nothing for this. I haven't <laughs> thought about anything. Um, All right. Give him a second to think. I gonna say, hold, we'll I'm going to, I'm going to hold my action. Um, All right. You're going to hold your pass action. It to Margie. All right. All right, Margie, tap some mana and uh, <laughs> all right. Um, I reckon, like I haven't prepared an answer for this because I was like, let's do it on the fly. But you know what's fucked up the world the most in the past? The plow. Yonder. <laughs> well, yeah, now I'm thinking I should be saying the plow. Fuck. I was yeah, going to say, <laughs> I was going to say we should stop the British from inventing sea travel because that would, <laughs> that would be f- that would change gray. a lot. That would change a I lot. I mean, I think the plow would, the the plow consequence, the plow effect um, would still arise regardless on without societal structures to counteract it because I think once you become agrarian, you have to become, mm. like, unless you changed, like, unless you went back and went, Here's a tractor. Sick. All right, cool. Peace. Um, and they're like, what the fuck? Can oh, yeah, I here's the schematics. A, a, a slight amendment to your the sailing for the British. I yeah. would say you should go back and make it so they don't invent the longbow because that's what originally gave you the military supremacy. So if you get rid of the longbow, uh... they would have never been a military power and then they wouldn't have had the resources to create their navy. Or Re- really, just really we, cut them off at the knees. Do we go back and give non colonized like countries that were colonized pre colonization, just be like, here's ten thousand U.S. Marines, and they're like, <laughs> you know, like don't 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 think too much about it. Just cool, peace. Oh, here's a world map. Bye. The and it just says like England circled with like these guys suck, and it's like yeah. treasure be here, kind of <laughs> tre- big X marks the spot. <laughs> I mean, I feel like what you're talking about is just the exact same thing happening in the opposite way, though. It's the same. Is it not ending up as the same crime? Yeah, but England's a shit little island. Oh, no, I agree. I mean, and also, look, okay, maybe we don't give them military. Let's just suppress Europe's development and just give everyone else a chance. If, yeah. if the problem was if we stopped Europe warring with each other for hundreds of thousands of years and having to keep on upping the ante to the point where they went everywhere else, like, oh, wait, they do not have any of this because they haven't been murdering each other intensely for hundreds of years. That's, God, that's okay, the problem. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> what if I just go back and I give them all the internet <laughs> and computers and then they just sit around just blanking and playing now. computer games? Just a modem? They're like, just a modem. No, yeah. uh, the one thing is the introduction of computers and the internet. So they just sit around wanking and like 
bullying each other online instead of doing anything maybe i don't know it's a i'm gonna life. i've got to stick with no ships maybe yeah. or no longbow but uh mm, this no is longbow. hard josh uh, well, I, you know, I, I figured whatever you do is going to have some pretty dire consequences. So my first thought was if I go back 365 million years and I just find that first tetrapod that leaves the ocean and just punt it back into the ocean, like I feel like, <laughs> boosh, it's problem solved. Really? Like if I'm going to go all out, like I think I proved this a couple of times. If I'm going to go all out, I'm going to go all out. Yeah. So that, that, that one tetrapod that thought, oh, this land looks kind of nice, punt. There it goes. Bad idea. Uh, then he'll go and tell all his tetrapod friends and <laughs> the world will be a happier place. But no, uh, runner up, I would go back to uh, 2010 and I would not call my friend who was buying this thing called Bitcoin for like $10 each an idiot because I was like, that's fucking stupid. And mm. I was wrong. Uh, but no, I, th I think what I would do is I would go back in time and I'd kill Thomas Edison. No, I feel like Nikolai Tesla should have had the chance to shine and uh, because of Thomas Edison, he didn't. So I'm going to go back in time. Kill what Thomas do you mean? Edison. Thomas Edison was great. He absolutely didn't ever go around <laughs> testing his electricity by electrocuting elephants. <laughs> didn't happen yeah, a bunch of times. Yeah, he had no problematic views yeah. either. And yeah, uh, Nic Nicholas Tesla has had an impact. We've got electromagnetism thanks to his discoveries. Yeah, um, but he would have had more of an impact had he not been like shat on by everyone because everyone wanted to side with Thomas Edison instead. Even though there's like, no There's no scientific units named after Edison, but there are Teslas, so... True. True. Did it, didn't they end up switching voltage anyway? Are they still? Yeah, Nikolai, Nikolai yeah. Tesla won that, but like a lot of his other inventions got poo pooed on later on down the track. Yeah, it's because he didn't invent the automatic course. hammer or the fourth, the, <laughs> the wheelie, the lean back chair. From the Simpsons. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's 100% it. That's where he went um, wrong. You know, wireless electricity stupid. Six legs on a chair. <laughs> hell yeah, sign me up. Speaking of. Uh, Speaking of inventions, actually, that's where we're going to go. So there's two inventions that are widely regarded as like, well, as you're talking about ship, you know, ship seafaring, the compass, and also um, gunpowder, which were massive in everything that's happened in the world so far. Little do most people know that China invented them both hundreds of years before everything else. And they just decided... That's a, the compass. That's a cool toy. Don't actually know it points north. It just points <laughs> around. I love that. Let's give it to our kids. And then they invented gunpowder. Like, fuck you. Let's make fireworks. So <laughs> I would go back and I'd watch that moment. I'd be like, hell yeah, brother. You're doing it right. And that's it. I wouldn't even change it. I wouldn't change a thing. But it's about hell yeah, no, you take you take you you take the British and you say, now this is how you do it. And <laughs> no, I don't want to give it to them earlier. Them no, you got to scare them with firepower. Like, use a lighter and they'll be like, whoa, and be like, I'm a wizard. I'll come for you. You'd, I was, you'd 100% be seen as a wizard, by, especially by the British back then. <laughs> oh, I'd be just... I would have been burned immediately. Actually, I just they probably would have just been like, oh, she's Pictish. Like, the yeah, I was gonna say... Scottish people. Yeah. yeah. So maybe like... maybe we just like, I guess like, you could get context, keep going back. Based, realistically, you need to stop the Romans from going there. So then, yeah. Just, honestly, if, if the people Romans that live in, 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 that live in England Greg. aren't even English people, that's not the people that lived there. They're <laughs> the, Sa the Saxons from right. Normandy. Are the people keep that live in back. England now? They're not even the same. Like they're different people. <laughs> okay, and then you I'm keep going, going back. back. You just keep going back. So I'm going back, and I'm building a big fuck off wall between the French, between France and England, so the Saxons and the Romans can't get there or I'm just erasing it off their maps or something, <laughs> so that England never goes from its shit feudal system where they're just rolling around in the mud and they weren't a united kingdom. They had all the different little uh, kingdoms within it, like Anglia and Cumbria and all of that shit. No Saxons, no Normans, no Romans, nothing. Fucking just... Sh you England's rolling... Leave England to roll around in their shit and leave Romans to go, I don't know, do cool shit. I don't know, fucking... <laughs> Genocide the Celtics, you know, this is what they did, you know, just go. Yeah, just, I'd be nice know, if they hadn't killed the Pictish, my ancestors. Yeah, and, you know, the all basically the entire Nordic genocides that no one talks about, but, you know. Hmm. Oh, and, long, if they didn't do, and if they didn't do slave trading along uh, the Baltic rivers and stuff along in Eastern Europe and from Scandinavian This whole place is a hellhole, basically, Russia. is what we're getting yeah. at. No matter what yeah. you change, the place oh, is still I fucking, all, I fucking got it. We're all awful. I'm, it, someone I'm else going, just would have done it. I'm going back to continental drift times. <laughs> I'm breaking the world up, 
and I'll put them in them different spots. <laughs> Europe, <laughs> England, England's going with Antarctica. Europe's joining Arctic. Uh, good, good plenty of places can have some nice, and everyone else can have it a bit easier. And the Marianas Trench, or I don't know, do some weird shit to the weather patterns so that they can't <laughs> get out of their Arctic prisons. Fucking white people. This, um, this so is turned into yeah. our silliest answers. So. I mean. <laughs> Might as well just go put a giant fence around every single country so no one can leave their country. Because I'm pretty sure if you look I at think, history, is that anyone kinda, has done the same thing. Anyone has just Is that gone kind of like Hitler? Except neighbors. not. Like yeah. fence around every country, no no interbreeding. <laughs> is that yeah. sort of like, I feel like there's a bit of Aryan stuff going on. Well, that's, that's the right. only way you could end the hostilities you're talking about. Because if they didn't do it, someone else would have. Until someone invents bolt cutters, wire yeah, cutters, and that's it, yeah. <laughs> break out of there. <laughs> No. Uh, I'm I'm, uh, I'm putting a pin <laughs> in that right now. That's that's yeah. that's where we've got the end of that. I think we're all just going to agree. Everyone's going back in time and kicking everyone that tetrapod, sucks. Tetrapod back into the tetrapod. Office yeah, <laughs> tetrapod, tetrapod back into the. What ocean. if I what if I squish the amoeba? You could do that too. <laughs> just mm. boop. nuke it all. I'm gonna I'm gonna nuke before single celled organisms came into existence. Just nuke it. Fuck yeah. Set Fuck us yeah. set us back another hundred a few hundred thousand years, hundred million years. Yeah. I don't know. Fuck it. Yeah. But dear listener, I'm let us know. Ready. In the comments below, what historical event are you going back in time and changing? Because your out- answer can't really be more outlandish than this. Um, because <laughs> A Margie beacon and- in the sky. So they think that I'm God, like in the Monty <laughs> Python, like how that cloud's animate and God comes out, but it's my yeah. face. It's elaborate. <laughs> There's no real purpose. Yeah. yeah. But, but then uh, you become the icon of God. Come back to now. It's just photos of your face everywhere. That'd be sick. Actually, I'd do it with a lizard or a raptor. Do you remember raptor <laughs> Jesus? That was a time. Oh, oh the Jesus internet. Oh, dear. Replace right, no, Jesus just... with a lizard. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to end it on that note because hashtag Jesus raptor. Sure. <laughs> hashtag lizard, lizard Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>